All right, we are back and we are going to do some matting. I've got my uh, supplies all lined up here. I got a brand new towel, clean bowl. I've got my part A, part B silicone, my thinner. I've got my uh, matting powder and a sponge. And of course, my pieces that I'm going to mat. It's good to get it all set up because matting is probably one of the most important layers of painting you're going to be doing. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's the last layer. It's what's going to take away this shiny look and make her look more like this. It can be done wrong so easily. There's so many things that can go wrong and a lot of them you won't even notice until you go to rinse off the matting powder. So I'm going to try to show you what I do. It's kind of worked out for me pretty well. It's been a total learning process. You could ask any artist and matting is no fun. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put equal parts of A and B in here and I'm gonna thin it out quite a bit. I mean to like apple juice texture. Some people add a pigment to their matting layer. I don't, I just do it clear. That works for me. Um, and then I'll, okay, I got my matting powder, my big mop brush, my sponge and I'm good to go. Let me mix this up real quick and I will show you what it looks like. Okay, I'm back and I wanted to show you the consistency of my matting layer here. It's pretty thin. You can see it drips off of there very nicely. In essence, what, this, what we're doing here is we're adding one last layer of silicone to our doll to seal all the other layers in. This will go over the whole piece completely, over the modeling, the veining, all the details, and seal it all in together as one layer. What the matting powder does is each particle of powder leaves an indent in that silicone layer, and that is what gives it the matte appearance, the indent of the powder. Because afterwards, when this all dries, we're going to rinse all the matting powder off. There should be no remaining matting powder left on your baby. So this is why this step is so crucial. You don't want to get them mixed up together so that there's powder sealed into that layer of silicone. You don't want that. You want it to sit directly on top so that you can rinse it off and all that's left behind is that layer with the indent, the tiny, tiny little indents of the particles of powder. It's best to use a powder that is um, approved of or released by the companies that do this because they know what chemically what's most compatible with their silicone. Um, don't use baby powder or go off in your own direction and use your own um, like food based items because then you're going to leave stickiness and any kind of food can lead to um, it going bad or spoiling. So we don't want to do that. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sponge. I'm going to go over my piece really well and make sure all of it's wet. you got to get in the creases of the nose, the eyes, the ears, everywhere. And then once I have it all coated, then I'm going to dab over and leave a little bit of a texture that I want because you don't want swoop marks. If you put swoop marks in and then you mat over the top, you will have a matted swoop. So we don't want that either. It's best to start in the areas that have crevices that you want to get into and then work your way out and then mat. Or, you know, what I'm saying is blot the whole area so it's an even texture. And then, after you've got that piece done, you are going to open up your matting powder. I had a nice container for it and of course I dropped it and it cracked. And so now it's in Tupperware. <laughs> so fresh thing there. What you're going to do with the matting powder, here's what I was taught, and this is the best tip I have ever received in my life. It was a lifesaver for me. You get your powder on your brush, and then you go onto your paper towel, and you grind it in there. Because you can see there's big chunks. You don't want to apply big chunks to your baby. So this is the best way. You can blot it, you can rub it on there, whatever you do, but see how fine I'm making that powder? Now it's very fine and I can apply it and not have to worry about big chunks on the baby. So I do that with each, each time I dip it into the powder. 
and you can see how small of particles that is now versus it was chunky. All right, I'm going to get my first piece all wet down and then I will show you um, some mod matting in action. Now I have this piece all matted, or I should say, all wet down and it's ready to get some matting powder on it. Gosh, I wish I could figure out a way to hold this. Hold my camera, hold on one sec. All right, we're back. I think I figured out a way to hold the camera up so I could use both hands. All right, I've got this piece all wet, so time is of the essence now. I took some powder out of the container, blotted it on the paper, and now I'm going to quickly pounce it over my piece. Can you see that? That's hard to see. Now, when you start with the layer of silicone paint, you want to start with the outside piece and work your way in so that you have a surface to hold on to the whole time. This is also the last chance that you can pick fuzzies and hairs off your baby, so make sure you get them all. Otherwise, they are there for the long haul. I work my way up. Make sure I have all the little creases. <clears throat> Any little area that you accidentally missed, because it is clear, so it's easy to miss little areas, they will still be shiny when you're done. And you can go back and spot, you know, mat a couple little spots here and there, but it's easiest just to try to get it all in one shot, because you want as few layers as possible on your baby in the end. You see how it's matted? It's a little bit chalky right now. But um, like I said, once this dries, we will rinse all the matting powder off anyways. This process, it is also best to wear a mask because the dust flies. I work my piece over really well. You want to make sure you get between those fingers, but you want to be sure to pounce very lightly because even your brush will leave an imprint into that layer of silicone. I've got a couple little fuzzies that are showing up now that I've got the powder on. There. All right. One matted piece. Let me see if I can pick this up and show you a little bit better. A matted piece versus a non-matted piece. All right, I'm going to go through and do all of these. Like I said, I have this cool little setup here that my dad and I made that I can hang my pieces on. See, matted, not matted. And um, they have to dry for a good amount of time before we can rinse them. The key to doing that is to also check, to just stick your finger in if this silicone is hardened, then so is your dolls. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of my pieces, and then I will um, take a video of the rinsing step, the last step. See you soon. Okay, back. Now we've done our matting. You can see she just looks like a fresh powdered baby right now. All matted. Even the belly plate. Now I've got a really messy area because, I mean, my goodness, everything gets involved when you're matting. The brush. You can see um, there's little particles of silicone stuck to the ends. I'm normally able to get that off with a lot of work, but really every few babies or so you're going to be getting a new brush. So that's part of the reason why this gets kind of costly. New brushes, new sponges. So I'm going to go clean all this up. I'm going to let this sit for a few hours. And when I come back, I'll stick my finger in here and see if my silicone is dry. If it is, I mean, these are like ones I used the other day for the hair, the eyebrows. 
you can see they're completely solid. This was the fingernails and the milk spots. They should be able to pull right out of their container like that. So you'll know when this can do that, then your baby parts are ready to rinse. All right, see you when we rinse. And here we have the finished baby. I know I skipped the step where I rinsed her off and everything. I forgot that I was doing this video. So what you do is, um, after that the matting is done, I let it normally sit for at least half a day or overnight, preferably. You go ahead and you fill your sink up with some soapy warm water and let the pieces soak in there. That will dissolve all the powder that's left over. Um, then you rinse it with cool water and your baby is ready to assemble. And here she is, my sweet little queen. She's already got her nookie on and everything. You can see she's got some powder on her. Once you rinse and you dry, then you can look at your matting job and see. See, like, I have a shiny spot right there. So I'm going to have to go back and do a little spot matting job right there. But that's about all I see on her. And then she'll be good to go. I'd go back and do the exact same thing. I'd rub it down with a little bit of alcohol or the acetone first. Put that A and B watered down, or not watered down, thinned down quite a bit. And then I would add the matting powder to that one area and then let it dry. And then you're done. And here she is, a finished baby. And then you just assemble them just like you would any other reborn. You can apply powder. And then you got a baby. Thanks for watching my videos. Bye-bye.